Good morning. My name is Chris Chisholm, and I lead worship here on Wednesday nights uh, in our Pulse service. And I just want to let you all know how grateful I am to be a part of such a dynamic and amazing place. Uh, I was asked to give a, a testimony of love, and um, it's a lot easier to sing from behind a piano than it is to get up here and speak in front of you all today, so just bear with me a little bit. Um, three years ago, I met my partner, John, and I was working at another church, and I was very, very, very in the closet. <laughs> and we met and instantly hit it off and very soon we realized that it was more than just a fling and that um, we, we had a connection. And for a good eight months, I lived a secret life and he would come to church with me. It was actually pretty scandalous. He would come to church as my cycling buddy. And um, <laughs> it was, it was, it was quite, quite, a, quite a good story. It gets a lot more in depth than that. But uh, so it got to a point where you, you just get to that place where you can't live a lie anymore. And you're tired of hiding who you are and who you love. And I, I finally reached that place where I said, I'm taking the mask off and I, I'm not going to live this way any longer. And it was a really big step because it was my livelihood, it was my job, it was my whole world was centered around, around leading worship. And I, I love nothing more than, than leading worship and leading people into the presence of God. And to know that, or to think that that was all going to be stripped away was devastating. Went to my pastor, um, told him everything, just laid it all out on the line. And uh, after a three-hour car ride around Dallas. If you're ever going to confess something, don't do it in a vehicle where you are stuck uh, <laughs> until they decide to take you back home. So I was, after a three-hour car ride, uh, I, I got back to, to the church, and he said, take a couple of days, think about it. We'll, we'll send you to counseling. You can keep your job. You just can't talk to that John guy anymore. Um, and I, just, I looked him in the eyes, and I said, I can't do it. I, I, can't, I can't go back into that, that place because we all know it's a very dark place and it, it, that darkness just breeds more darkness. And um, at that moment, I, I said goodbye, basically. Um, and then the very following Sunday, it was the first Sunday of Lent two years ago that I stepped foot in these doors for the first time. And I remember Joe had some preaching on embracing the wilderness. And... I, I sat right over there, and John and I both, and we were just, first of all, freaked out by this many gay people in one place. <laughs> um, and it, it, was a very, it was a very surreal experience, and it was scary, but for, for God to have had a word for me, my very first time stepping through these doors to tell me, embrace the wilderness, embrace that experience, uh, it, was, it was very powerful. And... Needless to say, I didn't come back for, for a good six or seven months. And actually, after, um, after being in that, that place of trying to figure things out, I even took another month and went back to the church that I had left and thought that was the only way and went back into that closet for, for a good month. And um, John helped pull me back out of there again. <laughs> and, um, and he would tell me things like, you will find a place again to lead worship. You will, you, this, God's not done with you. You're, you have better things ahead of you. Why are you, why are you second guessing yourself? Why do you think this is the only way? And I remember thinking that he was just the voice of the devil trying to, you know, keep me bound by my sin. And um, it, it was a very quick thing because that was in July, and by October I had found this place and I was leading worship on this on this chancel, and I. I can't begin to tell you how amazing it is to be able to worship freely and to worship as myself and, and not have to have the mask on and to lead you all into the presence of God. It is an amazing thing and it is a testimony to love. And I just encourage every one of you to, to come here with open hearts, whether it's a Sunday or a Wednesday, it doesn't matter what, what your favorite style of, of worship is. Just find what you love and embrace God wherever you can. Um, when I first started coming on Sundays, it, it took a lot to get used to the 
um, liturgical way. It was, it's very different for someone who grew up in a Pentecostal church. But I find meaning in it, and I've, I've learned to embrace both things, and I just challenge you to just open your hearts and open your minds to, to be open to whatever God is trying to show you. And we've got an awesome work to do here and many, many, many people to reach in many different ways. And I just challenge you to just get on board and let's all do our part to see God move in our community. Thank you.